Hi everyone, so welcome to season four. It's our brand new season. I hope you all had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, we got a really exciting year for you this year. We got a brand new title that just came out. And uh, we got some really cool stuff we're gonna show you. We're gonna be going up to the Silver King and uh, in back into Ainsworth into some really cool mines, dangerous, uh, just awesome mines. Um, and then we're gonna go to Mexico. But today we got a real treat for you. So we're going into a mine not, with not one or two uh, awesome ladies but with three awesome ladies and they're going to take them into a mine and they're going to show us some bats so, so these people they went in there and they're crazy about bats now you might think oh bats eh but I, I, believe me after you see this you're going to think bats are cute and these girls aren't scared of bats you shouldn't be scared of me either it's a really cool show we went into phoenix we've got the largest known hibernaculum of uh, townsend's bats that i discovered up there so uh, they're going to do a big project up there so we're catching a whole bunch of these bats and we'll tell you all about bats and they're really cute. You're gonna love them. So <laughs> stay tuned for the show. Most of it's probably mental. You don't like dark places that are wet and uh, you're claustrophobic. If you have a bunch of phobias and stuff, it's not gonna be the place for you. I don't know why you're following me. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> All right, so we're at the top elevation here with Jason and Corey. And we're gonna go into the squeeze here and have a look at this mine here. So this is the tightest place you gotta squeeze through. It's only a few feet. I'll take your pack off and we'll go in there. You guys want to go ahead? Ooh, fun. <laughs> tight place is just what It's I not want. that tight, it's only a few feet. <laughs> if you don't believe me, I can go first if you want. <laughs> 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 At least it's not wet. Yeah, it's been on yet, so. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll yeah. be dark in there. Yeah. It was last time I was in there. Yeah, I imagine it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see, so I promise you bats. There's one right there. Wow. <laughs> there's a little, oh, there's another one right there. There's a Townsend there. Yeah. And another Townsend there. We've seen three bats already. Yeah. Yeah. Townsend's. <laughs> you, you got the bags. Yeah, there's one right there. But there's lots more as you go further in. But. So, sorry, Corey, uh, you have a lot of bats at home there for pets? <laughs> no, I don't. I used to rehab some bats, but not anymore. <laughs> they, uh, they're a lot of work. They're pretty cute, though, eh? They're very cute. People are always worried that they're going to get caught in your hair, or they can't see in the mine, but actually they have better better eyesight than we do, eh? They do. Yeah, they can see in really low light, uh, so they're not always echolocating. They usually produce sound to navigate through their environment, but they have perfectly good eyes, and on moonlit nights they'll often not echolocate because it costs a lot more energy to make all that really loud sound than it would be just to use their eyes. So another, he didn't actually warm up completely because his ears would have gotten up like this. You know, they're still rolled alongside his head. So uh, he's not too panicked about yep. being handled. It's interesting, yeah, because if they were really concerned, they would start unrolling their, their ears so that they could take flight. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's warming up. So they can't bit. fly with their ears rolled up? They have to unroll them? Right, to be able okay. to hear, to echolocate. Yeah. So I guess he likes you. I guess so. He's definitely not as panicked as uh, one would think when you handle wild animals. But, yeah. He's warming up a little. You can see he's starting to breathe a little heavier, and that's his way of warming up. But it'll take a good 10-15 minutes if he was to fully warm up to flight temperature. Right. Custom deluxe installation nice. here. Nice. It's still working. Good. Huh? <laughs> okay, thank you. Lots of bats, hopefully. Yeah, it's suspended quite nicely in the middle where the bats will fly. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's pretty close to here, so... Mm -hmm. Should do the trick. Do a video. A paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, sometimes it takes them a while to really get a good grip, so we don't let go until they've got a really good grip. Oh. Are you gripped on, bud? Don't want you to fall. Oh, yeah, there you go. You're gripped. He's breathing a little faster, though. Yeah, that's his way of warming up, because he's like, uh-oh. <laughs> oh, he's <laughs> going to start flying? <laughs> yeah, but if we move out of here yeah. in the next few minutes, he'll probably just sit back down. Look, you know, his ears are coming out. He's getting ready to fly, probably. Yeah, he is going to. He's warming up. Is it November 9th or something? Or? Eight. Eight. Okay. He'll probably take off further into the mine. 
So what's the most uh, time you spent in the mine underground in a day? A couple hours. Oh yeah. That's it, yeah. Oh, we should be able to break that record for you today. <laughs> yeah, I think you will. Do you feel like you're earning your keep today? Oh, this is fun. <laughs> it's been a few little tight ones, but not bad. I've... Yeah, well this isn't crazy steep, so. So it's just basically a vertical line from that skylight all the way down to here, see? So and they just go straight down, so. And that's where we're seeing them. The skylight is just above us, or the, or the, the chute that goes to where the skylight is. There's more here than last time I was here. See that um, bot fly? Well, it's um, not a bot fly, actually. It's a, it's a type of fly. It's like a um, parasite? It is a parasite, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the fly. Strebly. No, it's not Strebly. Shoot. Is it sucking the blood? They do. They burrow down in, yeah. Uh, but they're only found on Townsend spots. This parasite, you won't find any other species of bat, which is unusual, because usually they share a lot of different types of parasites. I'll be doing that bat a favor by killing that parasite, eh? Possibly. We have gone in and gathered these up because some people look at them. Um, in fact, I wonder if I brought a vial. I think I did. She does have a bear patch. It suggests that she raised a pup this year. Um, but she weaned quite a while ago because the, the teats are not... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, they're not chewed on. Like, sometimes they look really scabby. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so she successfully raised a pup a while ago. It's a western small-footed bat. So we got all our gear down here, and we're just starting to get everything into the mine here. So we ended up having the two trips with my big uh, sled, and we pushed everything down here. I would assume. Yeah, the snow is like pretty interesting to keep track of. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start putting all the stuff in the rabbit hole here. Yeah. Ram it home. Turns. Okay. Fill a new bag. Can I toss it? You know what happens. Oh, one. What's the one? Hopefully, that one was like at 40. So, I think mean. what happened basically is this side popped out. Alright, so this is all our gear we got packed up in here. It's time to go look for some bats. There's uh, two more you can get easy here. Three more. Holy shit, there's about there's there's all the bats you guys want here. There's there's five in a cluster you can grab at once. I'll bet there's about fifty bats here. Being stubborn, is he? It's very big. Yeah, so just be really gentle. He's got small legs. Oh. Well, one maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But right. <laughs> oh my god, he should have got a video of that. Are you yeah. It was like oh. getting well, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> just first time you ever caught any bats? Yeah. Fun? <laughs> they didn't bite you yet? I would think if they have their ears out, maybe that's more likely they're maybe going to bite you, but if they're all cuddled up, it doesn't seem like they're very active. Yeah. 
Yeah, hey guys, you shouldn't be touching any of this rock, eh? Because some of it's pretty unstable. Oh, okay. So, see, like it's got big cracks in it? Yeah. That could be like a two ton slab of rock. Yeah, it's ready to fall. So, you grab one all. <laughs> you got one ready? Yeah. Lined up in there. Nice. Okay, this one we can't. Just stick a dynamite inside that hole. <laughs> Actually, there's a whole bunch of sticks of dynamite in there. Well, you wouldn't expect to see a laboratory in here, eh? Yeah, I know, eh? <laughs> oh yeah, they're ready to fly, eh? What are you looking for, Heather? Um, actually, just sort of, sometimes their wings get a little stuck up together. Oh, okay. So we just want to make sure that they're all free before, yeah, yeah. We, so they, before we... So they can fly. That's right. Um, can you take this bag? Ouch. <laughs> so another thing, if they bite you, don't pull away. Um, they have very fragile teeth. Oh, he's biting. So. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's biting, eh? Yeah. Was there a bag that still had I don't had think he's four? biting, he's just trying to get Because I think, I, so those extra bags, I think I actually put them Pretty small the teeth. Okay, so, we should probably I don't think I'm doing this right. But you've released them all, right? Kind of like uh, yeah, okay. Or you, yeah, you can open up your hand. Yep, there you go. Just, yep, like, mm -hmm. I think they're going to warm up anyway, and I just don't want to burn all that fuel. Uh -huh. Whereas the ones that are chilling in that tub right now will be okay. Fine, yeah. These ones will do first. And, yeah. Okay, I've got two. Okay, because we just need to know, like, we have to write down in the comments the frequency and the serial, serial number. number. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then we can take that frequency and test it on the low tub before we release them. Mm -hmm. So that, that bat weighs 11 grams. How much does the transporter weigh? Not much. These ones, yeah, they're not much. I think these are point, point four, point three. Half a gram, point, yeah. Point so three. a twentieth of its weight. So we try to keep it about 5 to 8 percent is generally of their body weight. The body that would be glued up here kind of uh, for their center of gravity right between their shoulder blades and then the transmitter will, uh, the antenna will stick out past. So we're going to have to catch these flexible. bats and take these transmitters nope. off again? No, nope. they, um, they'll, they'll fall off on their own. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, it yeah. kind of gets in there. The brand will smell good. <laughs> I have to have my headlamp under mine anyways. I could put it on the outside, but I, I still like to bend it more than... Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Oh, God, what a mess. Well, his ears are right up, eh? Yeah. He's, like, ready to take off. Okay. Yeah, totally. John is a student here, a volunteer here. Yeah. And uh, she likes bats, so she's releasing the bats. Yeah, if I jump around, I'm also probably supposed to have uh, gloves on. Yeah, you can see the little transmitters. Yep. Hope you find a good spot. See you later. It's amazing that they just like recover and peace out. Fly away. Don't worry about them biting you. No, they, this one's not really biters, it seems. Hey, hey. Oh, bye. <laughs> Fly pretty slow, eh? Yeah, they're cool. This is a Santa's workshop way <laughs> under Phoenix. <laughs> That's right. We're up high elevation, right in the snow. Yeah. This is where you expect Santa's workshop. Got poop on my hands. Precious fertilizer. Perfect. I got that. <laughs> She's kind of a nasty pretty bad when the skinniest nervous. girl breaks the chair, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so this is a fast-acting glue that's going to go in there, and it's going to dry right away. So how long is this going to stay on for it? The smonder? Well, we hope six weeks. No less, no more. Our modified eye buttons. They're actually um, temperature loggers. 
that we program to record their skin temperature for well, uh, one reading every three minutes. And then we'll know when they get warm, when they're cold, and figure out how often they um, arouse from hibernation and how fast that way they're going through their fat. So um, this is a very unusual way to use eye buttons, and these were custom made for us uh, in Edmonton at Nate. So this is just kind of an experiment trying these? Yeah, we're the very first ones to use them um, in this scenario where we're doing you know, hibernation, trying to collect them at the end, because they're store on board. So we do actually have to get these things back to actually get the data off. And what's interesting, this is new, this is cutting edge stuff. We've put in a reco tag, which is an avalanche tag. And that way, when they fall off, we will go around the mine here with an avalanche beacon and hopefully find them. Okay. Let's see how long the bat sits in place. They can handle cold temperatures a little bit. Like I've actually seen some of these bats, this particular species, roost in areas that are like minus one. But I can't imagine they do that very long because they would just burn through their fat. And they can only put on so much because, of course, they fly. And then um, if they get too fat, they will fly. So it's like this fine line between yeah. not enough fat to get through the winter, but uh, just enough so they can still fly. Yeah, it looks kind of like we're making a bomb here, but apparently not. There we go. We got her almost all hooked up there, just hooked, ready to hook the antenna up, and it'll be all finished. This is going to monitor all the bats that we put those little monitors on. When they fly, it's going to log them and uh, record their temperatures. Well, there we have our bat monitor set up here. Pretty good spot. There's a huge stope here, so there's uh, lots of bats sleeping in here. Should be able to catch lots of them on this monitor here. All right, Corey, so just kind of quickly tell the viewers here what, what it is that we actually did today. So today in Phoenix Mine, we put on um, temperature-sensitive radio transmitters onto 20 Townsend's Big Eared Bats, and we also put a new technology, modified eye buttons, on the backs of uh, 20, actually 19 um, Townsend's Big Eared Bats as well. And the idea is that we're going to set up um, this low-tech uh, on a big bank of batteries, and there's an antenna that will be receiving the signals from the transmitters and figuring out uh, what temperature the bat's skin is at so that we know when the bat is coming out of hibernation, uh, it gets warmer and then it goes back down into hibernation. We need to understand how often it warms up to know how much fat it burns through so that we can figure out how prone to white nose syndrome it will be when uh, white nose syndrome arrives here in the West. Now the little eye buttons that we're gluing on do the exact same thing except that we don't need to have a receiver which means those bats can almost fly anywhere in the mine. And when that little eye button falls off, we're going to go around with a little avalanche beacon and try to find him. And then we'll get our data off of those. Uh, oh, so that's just, pretty, pretty cool, eh? Yeah, yeah that's pretty high tech. trying two different technologies because this one is tricky, um, the, the whole transmitter one. Uh, yeah. So that's why we've got this new one that uh, we're actually working with the USGS on um, to, to try it in Canada and in the States. Okay, so this is pretty old technology, this, eh? This, this has been around for a while? This is old technology. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is old school, let's just do it and hope we get some data. Yep. Yeah. And then the new one uh, is a little bit of an experiment, too, because we don't know when these things fall off and if we'll be able to find them. Yeah, well, that's cool. That's uh, be exciting to see the results when they, when yeah. we come back and, uh, and get in control of the numbers, I guess, eh? Yeah, we'll be back in a couple of months. For more information about WCS Canada, uh, contact wcscanada.org.